Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about common house plants and I want to tell you some of my top favorite common house plants, at least at the moment, because they definitely do switch it up fairly frequently. So I want to tell you about the ones that have been really standing out to me lately and why I feel like common house plants are a genre, if you will, of plants that get kind of passed over after a certain while of collecting plants, at least usually. That's honestly kind of what I did. I started collecting common house plants to begin with because duh, I was just jumping in and like realizing what I liked and figuring out what kind of plants I liked, what kind of plant care I could give. Once I got comfortable with my plants because of those amazing common house plants, I moved on to searching for more rarer, uncommon, harder to find plants. Um, and then from there, I just kind of forgot about all of my common house plants for a while. They would be the ones that are just going to be the easiest to care for, at least for the most part. So they're the ones that are easiest to get forgotten about because they're just kind of like over there doing their own thing and I don't know. You just don't think to look at them after a while. At least I didn't. But now I still love all of my rare plants, of course, and I still am looking to acquire more rare or uncommon plants, but I love all of the common house plants that I currently have. I do feel like I don't have a ton at the moment. I obviously don't have that much space at the moment, but I don't have a ton, but the ones that I do have, I really, really appreciate. So let's just get on into it here. I'm just going to grab this one because it's right next to me and it's definitely a very common house plant, one that you can find pretty much anywhere you want to go if you're looking in a big box store like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or any one of your local nurseries, you are almost guaranteed to find one of these. And this is a Philodendron heteraceum. And actually, this wasn't even the plant that I wanted to show you. So the one that I wanted to show you was my lemon lime. I'm getting all turned around here, but I can't carry that one upstairs or it could, but it would just be a hot mess. So I will put in some photos and cl video clips of that one for you as well, because that one's really just been like calling to me lately, but she is not far behind. So this is just your standard philodendron heteraceum. So that means by standard, I just mean it's like your dark form heteraceum or heartleaf philodendron. It is just beautiful. Like, look at how beautiful and lush she is. So this one I have obviously trailing down. So the leaves are staying rather small. But the really nice thing about philodendron heteraceum or the heartleaf, or the heartleaf philodendron is that even if you do want to have this trailing, which I feel like is most common with this plant. Um, the space between the nodes or the internodal spacing is not going to get super, super long. So all of your leaves are still going to look nice and close together and it's going to keep your plant looking fuller and bushier for longer, which is really nice. So yeah, I just, I love this plant and it is so, so easy. This is a plant that will talk to you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, let's talk about it. <laughs> so what I mean when I say that a plant talks to you is that it will really let you know when she's thirsty, when she's got too much light, anything of the sort, when her roots aren't happy, they'll let you know. So the way that I know that this plant is getting really, really thirsty and ready for some water or some food is that all of the leaves are going to start looking really like what's the word? Not shriveled, but they're going to look like they're curling in a little bit. They're going to feel very, very paper thin as well. So definitely be going around and touch your plant's leaves and get acclimated with how they feel um, or get acclimated. Oh my gosh. Wow. Plant brain. Get acquainted with how your plant's leaves feel feel. Um, that way you know when they're starting to feel a little bit different because that will also tell you, other than telling you that your plant is thirsty, it could also tell you that there's like a pest problem or something else like that or burning or overwatering or something like that. So definitely fill your plant's leaves to see what's going on and help you better understand and be able to care for your plants. But um, but yeah, this one is super, super talkative. Other than getting those um, kind of shriveled in, thin feeling leaves, they'll also be very, very droopy. So this guy was watered pretty recently. I want to say within the last week I watered this plant. So it's looking pretty nice and like plump and like all of the leaves are like kind of pushed up a little bit. Whereas if this was thirsty, it would all be just like really sunken in and just like looking really sad. And also I feel like the color changes a little bit when these guys are thirsty. It gets a little bit lighter, which I guess makes sense if the leaf is feeling a little bit thinner 
it's, I don't know, maybe it has less of that chlorophyll that's going in there. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but I will say that it definitely gets a little bit lighter in color along with those thinner leaves. So after all of that rambling, the reason that I wanted to show you the lemon lime specifically today, and I will pop that over here probably, um, is because that plant I have trailing up a pole and oh my gosh, you guys, some of the leaves are getting so big and so luscious. They're just gorgeous, but I just can't get over this plant. It's so tall now and it's definitely way outgrown the pole that I have it on. I think it's on like a five foot pole and it's definitely outgrown it. I've cut it quite a few times to just like try to keep the leaves looking big because after they've trailed up and the aerial roots have attached to the pole, that's what is allowing the leaves to kind of like get bigger is that they have like more stability so they can carry that heavier weight of the larger leaf. But once it reaches the top of the pole and there's nothing for the aerial roots to grab onto anymore and they start hanging down, the leaves will start to get smaller and it happens pretty quickly. So it's kind of a bummer, but it is a really, really cool thing that that can happen. And then it's kind of like an added option to have like, if you wanted the look of the plant when it's trailing and you also love the look of it when it's climbing up something, you can just take a cutting, have it trailing and have it both ways. I feel like I am just so rambly. I actually have not had coffee today, if you can believe it. And it's like 2.30. Who am I? I might have to have a coffee mid sesh with you guys. But yeah, philodendron heteraceum and philodendron heteraceum lemon lime, both super common, very easily attainable plants, usually very, very inexpensive as well. I'm talking like you can find cute little plants for like two to five dollars depending on where you go. So definitely hunt for a bargain if you're looking for one of these plants and you might even be able to find like a really big well-established plant for a good price as well if that's what you're looking for. So I highly recommend both of these plants here. I feel like I'm pointing to this one but it's you you can see it. <laughs> But I definitely recommend both of these plants here, both the lemon lime and the standard green heteraceum or heartleaf philodendron. They're just amazing plants. Even if you're not a beginner plant owner, like I would say I'm not a beginner anymore necessarily. I've been collecting plants for a few years now and I still absolutely cherish these plants. I Me mean, cherish is a strong word, but I absolutely love these plants. I just think they're so beautiful. And that lemon lime heteraceum can really just brighten up any corner. Like it's in a fairly... I would say a fairly dark corner and it's still popping off beautifully. And do you see those pink emergent leaf colors? I mean, come on. Okay. So this one I'm really excited to show you guys because once upon a time, I would not be able to include this plant in my common houseplant favorites list because it used to be really hard to get your hands on, but now, that is not the case and this plant is super, super easy to find. I found mine at a local Lowe's for like $15, $14.98, a really, really great price and I guess I will show it to you now. This is it, this is my Hoya Curtisii. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love this plant. I cannot even express to you how much I love this plant. I love it so much that this is my second plant. I have another one, it doesn't look quite as good but she's still doing her thing so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut her back yet. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, but this is my newest acquisition and it's, well, not newest, but my newer acquisition. It's so, so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, I really hope that this is capturing. Oh my gosh, did I just break one? No, we're good. But I hope it's capturing just how beautiful this is. Okay, so the Hoya Curtisii, listen. Can we just talk about how pretty she is before we get into care? I just absolutely love this plant for the looks alone. I mean, obviously that's why we love plants is for the looks, but you guys, I just feel like this is such a unique plant. Like the leaf shape is so unique. It's got that beautiful coloring on it where it's like kind of silvery, not necessarily sparkly, but kind of just like silvery splotches. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. And the texture, what? The texture is crazy, you guys. It feels almost like, 
a cat's tongue or something like that. Like it's super rough and bumpy. And I'm gonna get you the best shot that I possibly can. So hopefully you can see that texture, but oh my gosh, you guys, it's so gorgeous. And it grows these little aerial roots that wanna grab onto stuff. If I had space to have my grow tent popped up right now, I would have her in there for sure. And she would probably have grown even more by now, which is just crazy because I feel like this plant has already grown quite a bit since I got it, which is another reason that I love the Hoya Curtisii. It grows so fast. If I'm being honest with you, I feel like most Hoya are actually, sorry if you can hear kids playing out there. I guess I have my window open. Maybe I'll shut it. It's a really nice day out today. So we got lots of kids at the park, but um, what was I saying? If I really think about all the Hoya that I have, I really do feel like they are quite quick growers. I feel like people always say, at least I used to always hear that Hoya are such slow growers and they take forever and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I feel like they're pretty dang speedy. Most of my Hoya, all of my Hoya actually are, are growing right now currently. And they have been for I don't know. I don't think they've ever really stopped. They've been they've been doing their thing pretty well, except for the two outliers that we had in the last video that I think you guys saw. So definitely check out that video for like really tricky plants, because um, there were a couple Hoya in there, but the Hoya Curtisia. I would say is definitely not one of them. So in regards to care for the Hoya Curtisii, I will say it's not a plant that is going to like talk to you like the philodendron that we were just talking about, but it is definitely easy care plant. It's very, very hardy. So when I say hardy, what I mean is that you can like drench this plant, like really, really, really sufficiently water this girl and she's gonna be fine. As long as you don't do it again, the next day. You know what I mean? Like space out your waterings. But if you like super, super thoroughly water this plant and then like maybe you forget that you watered it like a few days later and you just like give it a little bit more water, she's going to be fine. She's not going to have any adverse effects. I've never seen, did I say adverse? Adverse. At least not that I've seen. And I find that they're very drought tolerant as well. So I have, I think I talked about this in a previous video talking about Hoyas. So if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but I do feel like at the very beginning of my like plant collecting journey, if you will, that I was always hearing that you need to let Hoya get super, super, super bone dry in between waterings and like don't do anything other than that or they will die. So that's what I was doing for a really long time. I don't do that anymore now, but now that I have so many plants, I'll just kind of forget for a while um, and not water them. And I have let the Hoya get very, very dry. Not this Hoya in particular, but my other one, I have let get very, very dry and it, it was totally fine. I think it lost maybe a couple leaves actually, but in comparison to what could happen to some other plants, if you forget to water for like a month, it was pretty good. <laughs> Definitely a super like beginner friendly, easy care plant. And now it's common as well, which I just absolutely love. Once upon a time, a plant this size would have been like well over $100. And I got it for $14.98 at a Lowe's. So I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Gotta love a common plant. And you can see all of this new growth here. I'll try and get some pretty close-ups for you so you can see all that new growth popping out. And oh my gosh, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. They are definitely humidity loving. So I will say that if you have the ability to get this guy in a greenhouse or a grow tent, something like that, they're gonna be really, really happy in there. But yeah, Hoya Curtisii, I'll stop going on. I feel like I could go on and on. Maybe I don't need a coffee today. Ooh. Two seconds later. It's almost three o'clock. I feel like I should get a coffee before we do these next plants. <gasps> All righty, we're back. We have coffee. Oh, thank goodness. All right, now onto my next favorite common house plant at the moment, at least. I gotta grab my next one. Didn't come prepared. Oh my God, this feels like it's been well watered recently. <gasps> Hello, we're back. Ooh, I have some yucky looking leaves on top of here. All right, so <laughs> before I get too distracted, my next favorite common house plant to show you guys right now is going to be my Epipremnum Cebu Blue. 
Oh my goodness, she is so beautiful. I know it looks like she's in way bigger of uh, a pot than she needs right now because she probably is, but it once was very fitting for her because she was once big and luscious and amazing and now she's quite, I mean, she's still amazing and she's still a little bit luscious, but like just not as much. So this plant, if I'm being totally honest, I totally forgot about this plant for a while. I would look at it and like see it and stuff. You know, I knew it was there, but I would just never water it. I would always just, it always just looked fine. So maybe that's a good thing, but, and then it would look really not fine because this is another one of those plants that will talk to you. Um, but it just seems to take a little bit longer, at least for my specific plant here, it definitely takes a bit longer to actually like, say something and by that I mean you know the leaves will start drooping and stuff like that but it takes a bit longer so it would be like super hydrophobic or the soil rather would be super hydrophobic by the time I would like remember to water this plant and then the, the saucer would get like way overfilled so I'd have to like take to the, it was a whole ordeal you know what I'm saying a whole ordeal <laughs> but now I feel like I just I've obviously all of my plants have moved they're not in the same spot anymore, not in the same state anymore. And now I'm noticing them all in a different way, if that makes sense. Like now I'm just appreciating the look of this plant more. I'm appreciating the color of this plant a lot more as well. And it just adds a really nice like little color, but color break. Whoa, whoa, whoa to all the other green that I have going on. Similar to the heteraceum that I was showing you earlier, you can have this guy trailing or climbing. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like hold this up right now because it's just too heavy. But yeah, you can have this plant trailing or climbing and similar to the heteraceum, but different, the plant's leaves will start to change as you let it climb up something and those aerial roots are able to attach to the pole or the plank or whatever you put in there for it. Um, once the aerial roots are able to grab onto something and the plant feels that it has more strength and stability, the leaves will not only get larger, but they'll get fenestrated. They'll start to get those holes. And when the Cebu Blue fenestrates, it's just so beautiful. I feel like every plant that fenestrates does it in a slightly different way. And the Cebu Blues are just so gorgeous. I don't have any examples on here. It does take a second for them to start fenestrating. Not too terribly long, but it does take a little while. I would say that like the Baltic Blue Pothos is gonna fenestrate when it's still just like short and squatty in the pot, whereas the Cebu Blue is gonna take a bit longer. And you can find these guys everywhere like literally anywhere and everywhere. If you can't find them for some reason at your local big box store or your local um, nursery, I haven't been to a nursery in a minute. Can you tell I forgot the word? Um, but yeah, if you can't find one there, hop on your one of your local like Facebook plant groups or something like that and ask around. And I'm sure someone will have a decent sized cutting or like an entire plant for you for a really good price. I don't think I've mentioned too, but for all of these plants regarding like watering, I would just say to water them when they feel mostly dry. They're all pretty easy. So if you underwater it a little bit or overwater it a little bit, you're gonna be fine. My next plant is also in a large pot. Ooh. So give me a second. Let's see. And I watered not long ago. Oh, this guy definitely needs more water though. He feels so light, my man. I got a bunch of delis at the top of this pot too, darn it. One eternity later. All right, anyway, <laughs> the next one I wanna talk to you guys about for common houseplants that are just like so killer. Ooh, killer common houseplants. <gasps> this beauty here, this is my Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. Now, do you say Skindapsis or Syndapsis? Let me know in the comments below, but I'm just gonna say Skindapsis because that's what I've been saying for forever until I hear for sure one way or another. But this guy, oh my goodness, first off, can we just appreciate the beauty, the size of some of the leaves? I'm getting shaky, I did an arm workout this morning. But it's just so beautiful, unless I have to stand up to show you the whole thing. Look at that, oh my God. A little bit about the Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. They are such easy care plants and they are such fast growers. I feel like a lot of Skindapsis or at least a lot of the more like uncommon varieties for some reason seem to be very, very slow growers. And maybe it's just like a Skindapsis thing overall. They're a little bit slower growing. Not this guy, nope. Mm -mm. She is just going for it all the time, every day continuing to grow and it's just 
Oh, it's amazing. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna try and get you close up in here so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. Like, do you see the size of that leaf right there? Like, what the heck? So I have my Skindapsis trailing, as you can see here, but this is another one that you could definitely have climbing up a pole or a plank or whatever, and it would be really, really happy with it. And I do think that the leaves will continue to get bigger and bigger. But one of the things that I love about this Skindapsis in particular is that when it's trailing, similar to that Heteraceum that we were first talking about, oh, Similar to that heteraceum, even when this guy is trailing, the internodal spacing or that spacing in between each leaf, each node, is going to stay nice and short. And in combination with that, the leaves are so big and juicy that it looks like there's no space at all. It just looks like all leaf. Like, it's so beautiful. Like, you don't see any petiole hardly. And that's one of the favorite things, or one of my favorite things, rather about this plant is that it's just, it always is gonna look big and bushy. Unless you had some sort of catastrophic event or something with your plant, or maybe you're just starting off with your plant or something and it's just starting to get going, it's gonna look bushy and beautiful. And honestly, even if you just had like one strand growing in a pot that you're starting with, that one strand, I can almost guarantee you it's gonna be beautiful and gorgeous and that one strand will, it will look lush, you know, just, due to the nature of how this grows. It's just so pretty. It's another talker. I guess I'll tell you that. She'll talk to you for sure. Just water it when she's dry, you guys. That's literally it. That's it. Spray her down for pests every once in a while. She's not a pest magnet either, knock on wood. So far for me, I have had little to no issues with pests on this plant. I don't know what it is. It's so nice that it's just like, it's just one of those plants that you can like put up literally anywhere and it's gonna look fabulous and it's gonna just like add so much interest to that area. Aside from that beautiful color where it's just like not a normal green leaf, it's like a deep gray, but it has so much of that silvery splotching on it. Oh, chef's kiss. It's just beautiful. So yeah, go get yourself one of these. You can find them literally anywhere. They might even have them at gas stations now. I don't know, but find yourself one of these. If you're gonna have any skindapsis, I think it should be this one. If any of you guys watching, watch any of those like YouTuber channels <laughs> when they always have like their makeup perfectly done and like their lips perfectly glossed, how many times do you think they have to re-gloss their lips? Because I definitely have to if I'm gonna like have any on after so much talking. You know what I mean? I always wonder. Okay, let me grab our next plant. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> hi guys. So, can you see me back here? Oh, I have multi-use plant. You know what I'm saying? It's also a clip holder. This is our next plant. This is my philodendron jungle boogie. I've also seen this be called um, a philodendron narrow before. Um, so, I, th I guess she's got multiple names, which I feel like they all do. I'm sure it's got a different, another different name, probably like a more botanical sounding name as well. This is one of my favorite common plants right now, like probably my number one favorite. It is also one of my number one like nuisance plants, um, spatially, <laughs> like this thing is always in my way, but I still love it. So that's how you know, you know? But, um, but yeah, this plant is so beautiful. She just pushed out this new leaf here too. So hopefully you can kind of see that color difference still. Can you see the back of the leaf there? Hopefully a little bit, but it's so beautiful, especially compared to like the green that it fades to. Like, oh, come on, it's so pretty. So the jungle boogie is another one of those plants, kind of like the Hoya cortesii that I was telling you about that definitely did not used to be considered like a common house plant. And granted, Depending on where you are, I guess I should have put this disclaimer at the beginning, but depending on where you are, none of these plants may be common for you. All of them may be common for you. Some of them may be, and some of them may be not. But for me and where I've lived, these plants have all been much more common now. So that's why they're on this list. But, but yeah, the jungle boogie definitely used to not be considered a common philodendron. Um, at least it wasn't when I purchased it. And I felt so lucky when I found this plant. It was just labeled as like, assorted philodendron or something when I found my first one. And it's just, it's so cool. And it was so small too when I first got this. And this sucker has just 
blasted off. Like it's so – can you even see just how big? Like look at that. It's so crazy. It's just beautiful. I love the unique shape of the leaves. It's kind of like – um I've seen it called like a tiger tooth philodendron, I think as well. Actually, maybe that's a different plant, but they have very similar leaves, which you can really tell where they get that name. Is that like an actual spider web on here? <laughs> I feel like I sprayed this plant down pretty often, but she's still very dusty. But, um, but yeah, this guy has gotten much more common lately. I've been seeing these at uh, like big box stores and stuff like at Home Depot and Lowe's, which is so cool to see and for like a really reasonable price. And I will say that even when this plant was like considered, at least in my brain, to be less of a common plant, it was still pretty reasonably priced. Like I feel like when I bought this, it was 15 or $20, somewhere in there. I don't think it was over $20. And I just felt like I found such an amazing score, which I totally did. I totally scored. And now I have this big, beautiful, luscious plant. So this is one of those kinds of philodendron that does want to start to grow upright. So it does have a really weak and like broken stake in here. It definitely needs a larger, more substantial stake for this plant, but it does like to be supported. I haven't found that the aerial roots, at least for my plant, haven't like reached out to grab onto anything, but it just needs like that added stability to lean up against because otherwise it's just gonna be really, really heavy and topple over. I feel like the jungle boogie is probably the, not probably, it definitely is the largest plant that I'm showing you today, especially as far as like how much space she can actually actually take up in your home once it gets much larger. And I personally love that. I love having a big statement plant and that's really what this is if or what it can be if you let it grow to that point, which it does not take long to do. It's very consistent about pushing out leaves and it's a philodendron. It's so easy to care for, but I just love that now we can find these like beautiful statement plants that are really, really large and like substantial in size and you can pretty much put it wherever you want. Like obviously she's going to grow faster and more substantial with better lighting, but if you have a little bit of a darker area, not no light, but a little bit lower light, it's still going to grow totally fine for you. It'll just be a little bit slower and maybe the leaves will be a little bit smaller, but I have had no issues no matter where I put this plant, whether it's in a little bit lower light or much higher light. She's just happy to be here, it seems like. So I definitely recommend this plant. If you are looking for a pretty reasonably priced plant that you can find almost anywhere that will grow and to be a really substantial statement plant for your house, this is gonna be the one. I mean, look at her. How cool. Like the shape of the leaves is so unique. It's so beautiful. And it's really easy to fight pests on this plant. I would say it is a little bit more pest prone to some of the other plants that I've shown you today at least for me. I've definitely had some bouts of spider mites on here because the leaves do have some like little bumps and ridges on here on the underside of the leaves. Um, that is where you'll find spider mites and stuff like that. And it's actually really nice because of the shape of these leaves and how like serrated they are. You can see really quickly if there's any webbing in between any of these little spaces here. And that way you know like for sure if you have spider mites. But yeah, they're really easy to find and really easy to treat on these leaves because although they do have some bumps and ridges, it's not a ton. So it's really, really easy to like wipe these off or spray these off and like fully clean them and know that you're getting a good deep clean. When I first bought this plant, um, there was a mealybug on it, which I didn't discover until like a week or two later. And I think it was literally just like one mealybug um, and I killed it with a little bit of alcohol on a cotton swab or a q-tip, um, took care of it super quickly. It was like no big deal um, and that was literally it. It was just the one. It was kind of weird. She collects dust really quickly because it is such a large plant and I don't know if like it has anything to do with the serrated leaves but it just collects, it collects dust so quickly. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know why that would have anything to do with it, but it's just wild to me. So yeah, philodendron jungle boogie. All right, you guys, I think that is going to do it for this video. Whoa totally spit on you. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I think that is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know what your favorite common house plants are down below. And let me know if you want to see this video, but with my favorite more rare plants, because I definitely have a few of those as well. 
And even if you don't want to see it, I might just do it anyway because it sounds fun to me. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.